find the indefinite integrals. For my first integral, look at x cubed, natural log of x dx. So this is going to use an integration by parts. So let's start by just rederiving that. So I take u times v, take its derivative. Product rule is going to tell me u prime times v plus u times v prime, add it together. So if I push the u prime v to the other side, we're going to have u v prime equals u v prime minus u prime v. If I take the integral of both sides, well, integration against this is going to give me integral of u dv. Integral against this is going to cancel out the prime. And then integration against this is going to give me u prime v, v du, putting the v out in front. Okay, the second term, this is happening because if I take the integral of a derivative, that's just going to give me back the original function up to a constant. So this is integration by parts. So where integration of sub by substitution undoes the chain rule, integration by parts is sort of going to undo the product rule. So for the integral that we're actually interested in, what I want to do is I want to take the derivative of each piece and see which one makes my integral simpler. So for the x cubed, that gives me 3x squared. Okay, that definitely makes it simpler by reducing the exponent. But for natural log of x, we're going to get 1 over x. And this is going to actually be the one we go with because it'll remove natural log from my integration completely. So 1 over x is OK because we're multiplying by x to a power. And then we can integrate that, no problem. So the point is, if I choose my u to be natural log of x, I won't have to wind up integrating it later on. Let's see how we set up. So I'm going to set myself up with a little two by two thing like this. u is going to be equal to natural log of x. dv is going to be x cubed dx, whatever is left over. du is just going to be the derivative of natural log of x times dx. So that's 1 over x dx. And then to get from dv to v, I'm going to take the antiderivative of x cubed. So we add 1 and flip it over, and that's my v. What this rule says, we go down the diagonal, subtract off when we integrate up. So going down the diagonal, it's just going to be natural log of x over 4 times x to the 4th. And when I integrate up, that becomes integral 1 4th x to the 4 dx over x. That'll simplify to just 1 4th x cubed. And the antiderivative of x cubed is no problem. We just add 1 and flip it over. So that's going to give me another 1 4th x 4th. Putting this together, I'm going to have x to the 4th natural log of x over 4 minus 1 16th x to the 4th plus c. OK, let's check this. So I'm going to take what's in the box and take its derivative. That should agree with our original expression. So using, first we'll have the product rule here, and then we'll see what happens. So I'll have 4x cubed times natural log of x. That's derivative of the first term plus the first term times derivative of the second term. So that'll just turn to 1 over x. All this is over 4. And then I have 4 comes down here, giving me an x cubed. So that'll turn to a 1 fourth. So we'll have a 1 fourth x cubed, which will go away with the 1 fourth x cubed from this term. And then the 4s are going to cancel here, leaving me with an x cubed natural log of x. And that agrees with the original integrand. Take a look at another example. So we don't need to rederive this. So we'll take a look at the derivatives. So I take the derivative of each of these. Does taking the derivative of either one of these simplify our situation? Derivative of x squared goes to 2x, and that's not bad. That's going to be something with a lower exponent. Taking the derivative of e to the minus x, not going to be good because it's going to give me back my e to the minus x with a minus sign out in front. So that won't simplify. That's just going to bring us back to the situation we started in. So we're going to let u be equal to x squared. dv is equal to e to the minus x dx. So du will become derivative of this times dx, so 2x dx. And then any derivative of e to the minus x 
Well, remember the rule is we're going to take the thing that we have, just put it back there, and then when I do the use substitution, we're going to wind up dividing by the derivative at the top. So that's going to put a minus 1 in there. So for our first step with the integration by parts, we're going to have u times v, which is minus x squared e to the minus x, minus integral of v du, which is going to be minus e to the minus x times 2x dx. Okay, we'll crush all the minus signs right now. So I'll have minus x squared e to the minus x plus 2, and then I'm going to have to do integral of x e to the minus x. So one more time. Well, we see that letting u be equal to x is going to get, get us to where we want to be. It's just going to send du to dx, and then there won't be any more x to a power. So we'll let dv be equal to e to the minus x again, dx. Okay, going through, we know du is dx, and the antiderivative of e to the minus x we just saw was minus e to the minus x. So now I can do the integration by parts for this piece. So I go down the diagonal, that's going to give me x minus e to the minus x. Then integrating up, we're going to have a minus integral v du, so that's going to be a minus e to the minus x dx. When I crush the minus signs, it's going to give me a plus. But when we take the antiderivative of e to the minus x, we're going to pick up another minus sign. So we'll be left with minus x e to the minus x minus e to the minus x. I take this entire expression and then replace it in here. Now there's no minus sign out here, so you can be sloppy with parentheses and you won't get burned in this case, but you should always keep your parentheses around so you don't lose minus signs. So going back to the original, we have this term here, plus 2 times this integral, which we just found here. So I put that in there, and then I get my answer. Minus x squared e to the minus x, minus 2x e to the minus x, minus 2 e to the minus x, plus a constant. We check our answer, so I take the derivative. That's going to give me 2x from this first term. So we have the minus sign, e to the minus x. Then I leave the first term alone. Derivative of this is going to bring down a minus sign, and then we just leave the e to the minus x alone. Going to this term, that x becomes a 2. And then when we go to this term, we're going to have the minus 2x, but the minus sign is going to come down to make it plus 2x, e to the minus x. Then my last term, we only have to do one derivative. So that minus sign is going to come down here, leaving me with plus 2, e to the minus x. When we check off, the terms that match up, so that is going to match with that to go away. This is going to match with this to go away. So I'll be left with the x squared e to the minus x, like we were expecting from the original integrand.